Hello there guys, welcome back to another Epic Inexorable Maths video. In this video, we're looking at a new thing called convergence tests. So when we have a sum, like the one in this question, and I'll, I'll talk about what an integral test and all that stuff is in just a moment, but when we have a sum, such as this one, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n, we might want to know whether it converges or diverges. If a sum converges, then it means that it is equal to a finite value, not infinity, not minus infinity, not undefined. It's equal to an actual number, let's say L or something like that. It could be anything, you could call it whatever you want. So sometimes they can converge, sometimes they can diverge. What's really important, a really important distinction to make here is with all of these types of things, with the integral test and with other tests that we're going to look at later, like the p-test, the root test, the ratio test, all of them, we're not trying to determine the value of the sum if it converges. We're just trying to determine if it does converge or diverge. So we're not working out what this is equal to necessarily, we're just trying to determine whether it diverges or converges, okay? That's the idea. So the integral test is normally not the one that people start off with when they learn convergence or uh, yeah, convergence test. It's not normally the one that they begin with. Normally you start with the ratio test, but this one I think is actually conceptually the easiest to understand. So we're gonna start with this one. So what is the integral test? Well, first of all, let's look at this specific question to motivate the answer to that. So the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n. By the way, in this entire playlist, every single video, of course we're going to be doing the sum to infinity. If we weren't doing the sum to infinity, then everything would just converge because it would just you just add up a finite number of terms. So this will always be infinity here. Well, this sum here, this is the same thing as 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4, all the way up to infinity. It's not obvious whether this converges or diverges. I'm telling you now, it diverges. This is equal to infinity. But it's not obvious why, because you've most likely, in your maths education, seen something like a geometric series, which can converge even though you're adding up infinitely many positive terms, okay? So just to contrast with, with what I've written here, one uh, I should say one, yeah, well, we just say, yeah, one over one plus one over two plus one over four plus one over eight plus one over 16 and so on and so forth. This one is actually just equal to two and it converges. It's the number two, even though there are infinitely many terms. So why should this converge and this diverge? You might say, well, this one does look bigger than this one because there's, there's more terms in there. There's like a one third that's adding to it. There's more terms. Can we formalize it though? Can we explain it a bit better mathematically? Well, yes, we can. So it's not always obvious whether something will converge or diverge, but we have methods to do that with. And again, let's talk about what the integral test actually is. So let's draw a kind of, a kind of like a graph of what this series is, okay? So every single term, I'm going to kind of draw it as a rectangle. Just stay with me for a second, okay? Let me cook. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and obviously goes on forever, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw this series as rectangles where each rectangle has the area one, a half, a third, a quarter, etc. So the first rectangle, this is gonna be one here, the first rectangle will have an area of one. This is the one over one term. The next rectangle will have an area of a half. So it'll look like this. Then the next one, this is a half, the next one will have a third. So like this, and it's, it's very difficult to draw, but that would be a third, and so on and so forth. A quarter, a fifth, a sixth, and that goes on forever. Okay, that's one, I've, I've made the y axis really tall, haven't I? But that's the idea. Okay, now what can we do with this? This is where the integration comes in. So what we can do 
is we can take the same function, so we, we've got the function 1 over n, but we can draw the graph of 1 over x, y equals 1 over x, on top of this. So y equals 1 over x looks like this, and I'm going to be very careful with how I draw it, okay? 1 over x goes through the point 1, 1. So it has to go through this point here. It also goes to the point uh, 2, a half. So do you see that it's going through the uh, top left corner of each one? Hopefully that makes sense. This is the graph of y equals 1 over x. And hopefully it makes sense why it's going through the top left corner of each one. It goes through 1, 1, 2, a half, because they're all on this function, they're all on this graph. Okay, and why have I done that? Well, guys, integration is actually not that bad compared to trying to work out whether or not this converges or diverges. We could just do an integral. So stay with me. What about the integral from, and again, I'll explain this in a little bit more detail in a second, but the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx. What about that? Well, think about it. What area in this graph is that representing? Well, it's representing this area. And again, that goes on infinitely. But the, the, the red area is this integral. Do you agree with that? Hopefully you do. Hopefully you do. This is an improper integral. Hopefully that makes sense. But can we just notice something? Do you agree or disagree? that this integral, the value of this integral, is clearly less than or equal to the sum from, again, n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n. Can we say that? Because, guys, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n is the area of all the rectangles. But do you see that the area of all the rectangles is clearly bigger than the area um, underneath the graph, the integral? Clearly. And I've written less than or equal to because in some hypothetical situations, it could be less than or equal to. So this is, the, this is the right way to do it, less than or equal to. Okay, now guys, all we have to do is work out whether this integral converges or diverges. If this integral diverges, in other words, if the red area is infinite, then the area of all of the rectangles, which is bigger than or equal to infinity, would also have to be infinity. So if we can show that this integral diverges, then it means that this sum diverges because the sum is bigger than the integral. That's the idea. That's it. That's all it is. So we just do the integral. And how do we do that? Well, we, remember, I've got some videos on improper integrals. Wink, wink. But uh, we have to do the limit as t approaches infinity of the integral from 1 to t of 1 over x dx. This is the limit as t approaches infinity of, and what does 1 over x integrate to? The natural log of x. Technically it's the natural log of the absolute value of x, but we only have positive numbers here, so we don't really care. And that's from 1 to t. And then we do, we substitute in, so we have the natural log of t minus the natural log of 1. But guys, as t approaches infinity, the natural log of t also approaches infinity. The bigger t is, the bigger the natural log of t is. So this is infinity, this diverges, okay? So we've just shown that the integral diverges. Because the integral diverges, we're saying the sum is bigger than or equal to infinity, which means it has to diverge. So in other words, the sum of the reciprocals of all the natural numbers, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n, does indeed diverge, and we have proved it. Hopefully that makes sense. In the future, we're going to look at some more example questions, slightly trickier ones involving some slightly harder integrals. You can also use this to show that something converges by rephrasing this and making the graph go on top of the function, not below it, if that makes sense. So you can make the graph go on top of it rather than below it in order to show that it converges. Because if the integral converges and it's bigger than the sum, then the sum would also converge. So you can do it both ways. So it's pretty useful. Intuitively, as I said at the beginning of this video, I feel like the integral test is the most intuitive type of convergence test. That's why I'm doing this as the first video. 
We'll do a bunch more into, uh, integral test um, uh, uh, videos, and then we'll move on to like ratio test, p-test, blah, 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 and we'll see all of that stuff. So cool, hopefully that makes sense. As always, guys, please let me know in the comments below what you wanna see, if you have any questions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.